Swimmers and boaters get ready to head to the waterways. Emergency crews all across the region preparing as well. KRK Stephanie Sharp was at one of the largest boat safety training courses in the country. And Stephanie, what is this all about? Yeah, Shannon. Now, this event is put on every year by a number of different agencies right here in Arkansas, like the Forestry Commission and Arkansas Game and Fish, you know, among many others. The training puts crews in real life scenarios. They would find themselves if they were actually in an emergency on the water. Now, this training, all a part of keeping families safe on the water this summer. It's not a sight you would typically see on a gray lake. The U.S. Coast Guard jumping in, saving someone down below, even though this is just a training. It's real world. It's Arkansas Fireboat School. Arkansas Fireboat School is one of the largest training events in the southern region. A number of different agencies across Arkansas and surrounding states learning what to do in an emergency on the water. It's not just playing on the lake, but hard work. We'll take back things from this training. We'll use them. Charles Fighters. Temple, a longtime firefighter from South Fork, learning how to respond better in a time of need. Learn how to better manage a crew. They aren't just training on the lake, but the rolling Caddo River. Instructors are teaching safety scenarios for small boats. While using a dummy, crews learn how to pick someone up from the water. The only water supply and the only fire suppression on the lakes for years were a couple of little floating fire pumps that you would have to drop in the lake, crank up, push away from the boat, hang onto the hose, and hope that the motor didn't flood out on the pump, which was never very effective. So a concept of securing fireboats through the Arkansas Forestry Commission that works directly with the United States Forest Service for federal property for rural fire suppression was developed. So Arkansas Forestry said, rather than us making the decision on who gets a boat or what kind of boat we need to screen or what really is important, we'd like to have a committee of volunteers with some Arkansas forestry people that review all the requests and award all the boats. Whether the boat is a 16-foot boat on a river or a 47-foot boat on Lake Washita or anywhere in between, one of the things that the fireboat program requires is that all the boats at all times be capable of fire suppression. Their primary mission is fire suppression but they also can be used in an emergency for search and rescue, for recovery, for dewatering a sinking boat. All of those applications are in use and that's where the need is. Recognizing that emergencies might evolve on the rivers or the lakes that are greater than one department can handle and because we knew that there needed to be uniform operation of the boats and an awareness and a camaraderie among the boat crews, Arkansas Fireboat School was started 10 years ago. The first one was at Mountain Harbor. It was a half a day school, a classroom through the day. We brought in a gentleman from Fire Department New York. He did a great job and did a great presentation for us. And then we walked around and kind of looked at a couple of docks and that was the end of the school. But the important thing was that we had 43, 44 people from forestry, from a couple of other neighboring states, and volunteer firefighters that got to meet each other and talk shop together. We decided after that school that we would have boat school every year. Boat school is put on by a volunteer committee. No funding of any kind for many, many years. We've had state help the last few years, but every dollar of it was all volunteer dollars, volunteer time, put together by volunteer firefighters to try to answer the questions that volunteer crews ask us. As we grew and as we trained, the word got out that maybe this thing made a little sense. Arkansas Game and Fish Commission came in at an early time and did a wonderful job. They provided officers and boats. They helped us with reset. They started scoring the events and became a very 
critical integral part and provide more personnel than any other agency. One of the great benefits to that is that their water enforcement officers all over the state work with the volunteer fire crews now one-on-one -on -one in training. Going out on a boat accident and not knowing who's going to be there or what their capabilities are, you know, in the years past. Now uh, we know what they can do. We know what kind of equipment they have. Plus they know what we can do and what our capabilities are and especially what we need on a, let's say, a boat accident. Department of Health came in because we had more and more EMTs and paramedics on the boats. Then Arkansas Fire Academy came in because we're effectively training people and they now award Fire Academy credit hours for fireboat school. The Coast Guard heard about us and they sent a Coast Guard helicopter in. We try to develop scenarios based on real situations that have occurred over the last year or two. You need to know how to dewater a boat. You need to know how to suppress a dock fire. You need to know how to handle a wildlands fire situation. You need to be ready to perform a medical response. One of the events that we have had that has been the most fun for crews, the Coast Guard helicopter would come overhead. They had their rescue swimmer in the fireboat with the crew to train them. They would hover over this boat with this helicopter with a hundred mile an hour downwash from the main rotor blades hovering over this boat as if they were going to rescue somebody and lift them out and then lifting it back up. Every crew got to experience a Coast Guard helicopter hovering over it and lifting somebody potentially out of the boat. The fact that they'd never done anything like it, the fact that they now had an enhanced dimension for being able to save people, and the fact that they were working with the United States Coast Guard, the finest life-saving organization in the world for over 200 years, was a huge sense of pride. One of the interesting sidebars to boat school is we got too big. We had the large boats that worked principally on the lakes, and then we had the small craft that were principally river boats, and they needed swift water training, an environment that the large boats never work in. So we divided the fleet into the large boat fleet and the small boat fleet and started offering through small boat training coordinators a small boat training event. Memphis now sends a Coast Guard small boat crew that is a part of boat school every year. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Commander David Block. I'm the response chief at Sector Lower Mississippi. And we are here to assist the uh, fireboat committee in um, putting on the uh, fireboat school. Sector Lower Mississippi, which is based in Memphis, uh, our area of responsibility runs from Memphis all the way out to Tulsa, west, and then south, just north of Baton Rouge. I do that with a uh, total of two boats and about 2,200 miles of river. So we rely on these volunteers out here when we get search and rescue cases that um, these are the people that are going to go out. I generally can't trailer for four hours into the um, area to conduct these cases. The cases would be generally over. So we heavily rely on the volunteer fire departments out here in Arkansas and our other states. Um, our port partners are, are just, I, you can't put a value on them along with our state and local agencies. So um, we definitely rely on them, and um, this training is invaluable. Air Evac sends a helicopter. We train the volunteers on how to set up LZs, how to triage patients, how to communicate with the helicopter crew as you are en route to the shore. As fireboat school developed and we were managing more boats and more scenarios, our IC started developing. Well, it went from a couple of people on radios to three or four people on radios. Then we needed a table and we needed a chart to keep track of the boats. And it has evolved to the point that we now have people come in and observe how our IC works. Last year, NOAA asked if they could participate. So we literally had a direct link with NOAA in Little Rock for weather as part of the normal ICs, so it has evolved into 
a 15 person fully functional incident command system with the 60,000 miles of lakes and rivers that we have in our state, I think over six, over 900,000 acres of water, we have placed over 60 boats. We now have fire boats in every major lake, on every major river, sometimes multiple boats on rivers in various locations, all manned by volunteer fire departments. As far as I know, this is the only fire boat course that's been put on in the United States. Uh, there's over 350 plus members, uh, several boats, uh, several departments throughout the state are involved. When you start talking about 45 or 50 fire boats, over 20 support craft, and you're getting into 70 vessels, over 400 people involved, we have more boats on the Gray Lake for fireboat school than in the entire Canadian Navy. Fireboat school has become kind of an icon of volunteerism among the boat crews in the volunteer fire community. But the whole school is about the support of its people and, and the people that so willingly have donated to us in the past. Whether you are a United States Coast Guardsman or a volunteer from Flat Rock, Arkansas, that is the spirit of volunteerism the spirit of first responders that makes me so proud to be a part of this. Boat school is about volunteers. They're not paid to come to that. They pay their own way. Fireboat crews schedule their vacations a year in advance to match boat school dates because they want to be proud of what they do. And that spirit is what has made Arkansas so great this wonderful little state with its volunteers and the Arkansas fireboat crews set the example for volunteer spirit in our state. Uh, Arkansas is a, a great state comprised of folks that value genuine friendship and they value hard work and fireboat school brings together some of the very best of that on waterways across Arkansas, at fire departments across Arkansas, uh, in families across Arkansas, we have these people that give freely of their time and they give freely of their, their effort. And it's our pleasure and honor at Boat School to bring all of those folks together and try to offer training that they can take home and use in their home areas. So it's my pleasure and the pleasure of the Boat Committee to serve the crews that come together for this event from Arkansas and from Texas and Mississippi and Louisiana in the past and Missouri in the past and hopefully in the future uh, from folks across the southern United States. So the, the crews that are here are the very best that Arkansas has to offer and I'd, I'd uh, put my own life uh, with any of them anytime. Well, the agencies that come together for this, our friends with Game and Fish, the Arkansas Forestry Commission, the Fire Academy, LifeNet, uh, Air Evac, and the people that feed us, Cisco and Subway. We have so many people that generously take care and continue to serve the boat committee and fire boat school. And without uh, the teamwork from all of those people, this wouldn't be possible. October morning in the Ozark Mountains Hills are blazing like that sun in the sky I fell in love there and the fire's still burning A flame that never will die Moonlight dancing on the Delta Levee to a band of frogs and whippoorwills I lost my heart there One July evening And it's still there I can tell Oh, I may wonder but when I do I will never be far from you You're in my blood and
Magnolia blooming, mama smiling, mallard sailing on a December wind. God bless the memories I keep recalling, like an old familiar friend. And there's a river rambling through the fields and valleys, smooth and steady. Makes her way sad A lot like the people Whose name she carries She goes strong and she goes 